For today's lesson, we're going to have a look at some algebra and geometry type questions in measurement. So a little more tricky examples. So take a look at this one, example one. What happens to the volume of a sphere if the radius is doubled? Okay, so one approach to this question is what we're going to call the numeric approach. So we're going to actually just choose numbers and plug them into our volume of a sphere formula. Okay, so first if we remember our volume of a sphere formula is volume equals 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. Okay, so let's just take for example, it's always good to start with a radius of 1. Okay, and obviously if we double that, then our radius would be Two. Okay, so we're going to look at the volume of a sphere for a radius of 1 and the volume of a sphere for radius 2. So for radius 1, we have 4 times pi times 1 cubed, which is of course just 1, divided by 3. And that gives us, if we round to one decimal place, 4.2. Okay, units aren't really important here. We're just comparing. They would obviously be in the same units. If we look at a radius of 2, then, we have the volume equals 4 times pi times 2 cubed divided by 3. And if we punch that one into our calculator and round to one decimal place, then we get 33.5. Okay, now we just want to compare those two values right there. So the best way to actually compare them is to divide. So if we take 33.5 and we divide it by 4.2, I want you to see that that gives us 8. Okay, so this means that if we double the radius in a sphere, the volume is actually 8 times as much. For our second example, we're going to bring back our algebra. This is actually a great review of some of your algebra skills from Unit 1. We're going to find an algebraic expression for the volume of this rectangular prism right here. So we all remember our volume formula for a box. That one's nice and simple. We have our length times our width times our height. Now, we always said that it didn't matter which order you write them in, but I'm actually going to always give you a suggestion when you are finding an algebraic expression for it. You always want to take the monomials right here, and you actually want to put them in front of the binomial, because hopefully that will help remind you exactly how to simplify that expression. So, even though it's length times width times height, we're actually going to take our 4x squared Okay, times, I'm going to use a little dot for times there, times our 3x squared, and then I'm going to use some brackets, times our 2x plus 3y. Okay, and hopefully those brackets maybe ring a bell and help give you an idea that you are going to have to use the distributive property here. Now, before we do that, let's multiply the first two together. Okay, we're remembering some of our algebra rules. We're going to multiply the coefficients together to get 12. And then when we multiply x squared times x squared, we're going to use our exponent law for multiplication, and we're going to get x to the 4. Okay, so now we have a monomial times a binomial. And hopefully you can remember and see that we're going to take that monomial and we're going to multiply it by both pieces in the brackets. That was called the distributive property. Okay, so first things first, we're going to multiply the 12x to the 4 times the 2x. So if we look at our coefficients of 12 times 2, we're going to get 24. Okay, and then for our x's, we have x to the 4 times x to the 1, and that's going to give us x to the 5. Okay, then let's go on to the second two terms here. So we're going to multiply 12x to the 4 times 3y. So our 12 times 3 is 36. And the x and the y are two different terms, so we just put them together. We're just multiplying them together. The exponent rules don't apply if it's not the same base. Oops, sorry, that y should not be squared. That's just one y. Okay, so that's a nice, that's what we call a simplified algebraic expression for the volume of this box. And the reason we would do that is so that then we could answer question B, which says find the volume if x equals 2 and y equals 8. It's much easier to take these values and sub, 
substitute them into the simplified expression than it is to substitute into the original expression above. Okay, so let's take those values and substitute them in. So from our simplified expression, we have 24x to the 5 plus 36x to the 4y. So we're going to have 24, we're going to substitute x for 2 to the 5 plus 36, and then we have 2 to the 4 times 8. Okay, and you can punch that in kind of all in one step if you want. So 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So we have 32 times 24. And then we're going to add to that 36 times 2 to the 4, which is 16, times our 8. Okay, and you should get 5,376. Now, there weren't actually units given in this question for the volume, but if the units aren't given like that, then it's a good opportunity. You just write units, and it's units cubed, right? Because we know that these are cubic units, whatever they are. All right, and for our third type of example, we're going to look at a question where we are actually given the volume, and we're also told that the radius is 6 centimeters, and instead it's asking us to find the height of the cone. And, cone. and this is actually going to help us apply our algebra skills as well that we've been building up this whole year. Okay, so of course we need to start with the volume of a cone formula. So we know that volume equals pi r squared h all divided by 3. So let's substitute in the values that we know from the question. We know that the volume is 120. Okay, we're going to leave pi the way it is. We know that the radius is 6. We are trying to find the height, so we're going to leave it as h, and that's all over 3. Okay, so hopefully you can see then in this question that we are now trying to solve for this h right here, we're going to isolate the h. We want it to be by itself on that side. So we're going to use opposite operations, just like we've done in all our algebra, to solve for that h. Okay, so first thing I notice is that divided by 3 here at the bottom right here, nobody likes fractions, so we're going to get rid of that. And of course, to get rid of that, we are going to multiply that to the other side. So when we do 120 times 3, we get 360 equals, we have our pi, let's just square that 6 while we're at it, so we know that that's 36, and times h, okay, and now we want to get rid of these two pieces right here, and they're of course being multiplied by the h, so we know we do opposite operations, we're going to divide those two to the other side, okay, so we're actually going to have 360 divided by pi, divided by 36, equals h. Now, there is a little bit of trick here when you do go to punch this into the calculator. You have to remember that this really means 360 divided by pi divided by 36. Okay, so you have to be careful to punch it in like that. One more time, 360 divided by pi divided by 36. Or you can use multiplication down at the bottom here as long as you have brackets around the entire bottom. You would have to use the brackets on your calculator. I like to just simply punch in 316 divided by pi divided by 36. And when I do that, make sure that you can do this on your own, I get a height of 3.2. Okay, and of course, given the units in this question, the height is actually 3.2 centimeters. Okay, so we'll practice some of these questions tomorrow in class. They definitely do require a little bit of thinking um, and bringing back some of your algebra skills. Thanks.